James Prescott Powell Fellow of the Royal Society, slash del slash. The 24th of December 1818 to the 11th of October 1889, was an English physicist and brewer, born in Salford, Lancashire. Chow studied the nature of heat, and discovered its relationship to mechanical work, see energy. This led to the theory of conservation of energy, which led to the development of the first law of thermodynamics. The C-derived unit of energy, the Chow, is named after him. He worked with Lord Kelvin to develop the absolute scale of temperature, made observations on magnetostriction, and found the relationship between the current through resistance and the heat dissipated, now called Chow's first law. Early Years 1892 Illustration of Chow The son of Benjamin Chow, 1784-1858, a wealthy brewer, and Alice Prescott Chow. James Prescott Chow was born in the house adjoining the Chow Brewery in New Bailey Street, Salford the 24th of December 1818. James was tutored at the family home Broomhill, Pendlebury, near Salford, until 1834, when he was sent with his elder brother Benjamin, to study with John Dalton at the Manchester Literary and Philosophical Society. The pair only received two years' education in arithmetic and geometry before Dalton was forced to retire owing to a stroke. However, Dalton's influence made a lasting impression as did that of his associates, chemist William Henry and Manchester engineers Peter Ewart and Eaton Hodgkinson. Chow was subsequently tutored by John Davies. Fascinated by electricity, he and his brother experimented by giving electric shocks to each other and to the family's servants. Chow became a manager of the brewery and took an active role until the sale of the business in 1854. Science was a hobby, but he soon started to investigate the feasibility of replacing the brewery steam engines with the newly invented electric motor. In 1838, his first scientific papers on electricity were contributed to Annals of Electricity, the scientific journal founded and operated by Davies's colleague William Sturgeon. He formulated Chow's laws in 1840 and hoped to impress the Royal Society but found, not for the last time, that he was perceived as a mere provincial dilettante. When Sturgeon moved to Manchester in 1840, Chow and he became the nucleus of a circle of the city's intellectuals. The pair shared similar sympathies that science and theology could and should be integrated. Chow went on to lecture at Sturgeon's Royal Victoria Gallery of Practical Science. He went on to realize that burning a pound of coal in a steam engine produced five times as much duty as a pound of zinc consumed in a grove cell, an early electric battery. Chow's common standard of economical duty was the ability to raise one pound by a height of one foot, the foot pound. Chow was influenced by the thinking of Franz Penis and tried to explain the phenomena of electricity and magnetism in terms of atoms surrounded by a calorific ether in a state of vibration. However, Chow's interest diverted from the narrow financial question to that of how much work could be extracted from a given source, leading him to speculate about the convertibility of energy. In 1843 he published results of experiments showing that the heating effect he had quantified in 1841 was due to generation of heat in the conductor and not its transfer from another part of the equipment. This was a direct challenge to the caloric theory, which held that heat could neither be created nor destroyed. Caloric theory had dominated thinking in the science of heat, since it was introduced by Antoine Lavoisier in 1783. Lavoisier's prestige in the practical success of Sadi Carnot's caloric theory of the heat engine, since 1824 ensured that the young Chow, working outside either academia or the engineering profession, had a difficult road ahead. Supporters of the caloric theory readily pointed to the symmetry of the Peltier-Seebeck effect, to claim that heat and current were convertible, at least approximately, by a reversible process. Chow wrote in his 1845 paper, The mechanical power exerted in turning a magnetoelectric machine is converted into the heat evolved by the passage of the currents of induction through its coils, and, on the other hand, that the motive power of the electromagnetic engine is obtained at the expense of the heat due to the chemical reactions of the battery by which it is worked. Chow's Heat Apparatus, 1845 Chow here adopts the language of this viva energy, possibly because Hodgkinson had read a review of Uitz on the measure of moving force to the Literary and Philosophical Society in April 1844. Further experiments and measurements by Chow led him to estimate the mechanical equivalent of heat as 838 FDLBF of work, to raise the temperature of a pound of water by one degree Fahrenheit. 
he announced his results at a meeting of the chemical section of the British Association for the Advancement of Science in Cork in 1843, and was met by silence. Chow was undaunted and started to seek a purely mechanical demonstration of the conversion of work into heat. By forcing water through a perforated cylinder, he was able to measure the slight viscous heating of the fluid. He obtained a mechanical equivalent of 770 FTLBF slash BTU, 4.14 J slash Cal. The fact that the values obtained both by electrical and purely mechanical means were in agreement to at least one order of magnitude was, to Chow, compelling evidence of the reality of the convertibility of work into heat. Chow now tried a third route. He measured the heat generated against the work done in compressing a gas. He obtained a mechanical equivalent of 823 FTLBF slash BTU, 4.43 J slash Cal. In many ways, this experiment offered the easiest target for Chow's critics, but Chow disposed of the anticipated objections by clever experimentation. However, his paper was rejected by the Royal Society, and he had to be content with publishing in the Philosophical Magazine. In the paper he was forthright in his rejection of the caloric reasoning of Carnot and Amal Clapeyron, but his theological motivations also became evident, I conceive that this theory, is opposed to the recognized principles of philosophy, because it leads to the conclusion, that this viva may be destroyed by an improper disposition of the apparatus, thus Mr. Clapeyron draws the inference, that the temperature of the fire being, 1008. C to 2008. C higher than that of the boiler there is an enormous loss of this viva in the passage of the heat from the furnace to the boiler. Believing that the power to destroy it belongs to the creator alone I affirm, that any theory which, when carried out, demands the annihilation of force, is necessarily erroneous. In 1845, Chow read his paper on the mechanical equivalent of heat to the British Association meeting in Cambridge. In this work, he reported his best-known experiment, involving the use of a falling weight, in which gravity does the mechanical work, to spin a paddle wheel in an insulated barrel of water which increased the temperature. He now estimated a mechanical equivalent of 819 FTLBF slash BTU, 4.41 J slash Cal. Reception and Priority much of the initial resistance to Chow's work stemmed from its dependence upon extremely precise measurements. He claimed to be able to measure temperatures to within 1200 of a degree Fahrenheit, 3 Mk. Such precision was certainly uncommon in contemporary experimental physics, but his doubters may have neglected his experience in the art of brewing, and his access to its practical technologies. He was also ably supported by scientific instrument maker John Benjamin Dancer. However, in Germany, Hermann Helmholtz became aware both of Charles' work and the similar 1842 work of Julius Robert von Mayer. Though both men had been neglected since their respective publications, Helmholtz's definitive 1847 declaration of the conservation of energy credited them both. Also in 1847, a number of Charles' presentations at the British Association in Oxford, was attended by George Gabriel Stokes, Michael Faraday, and the precocious and maverick William Thomson, later to become Lord Kelvin, who had just been appointed Professor of Natural Philosophy at the University of Glasgow. Stokes was inclined to be a Charlite and Faraday was much struck with it though he harbored doubts. Thomson was intrigued but skeptical. Unanticipated, Thomson and Chow met later that year in Chamonix. Chow married Andil Leah Grimes on 18 August and the couple went on honeymoon. Marital enthusiasm notwithstanding, Chow and Thomson arranged to attempt an experiment a few days later, to measure the temperature difference between the top and bottom of the Cascade de Salanches waterfall, though this subsequently proved impractical. Though Thompson felt that Charles' results demanded theoretical explanation, he retreated into a spirited defense of the Carnot Clapeyron school. In his 1848 account of absolute temperature, Thompson wrote that the conversion of heat, or caloric, into mechanical effect is probably impossible, certainly undiscovered, but a footnote signaled his first doubts about the caloric theory, referring to Charles' very remarkable discoveries. Surprisingly, Thompson did not send Chow a copy of his paper, but when Chow eventually read it, he wrote to Thompson on 6 October, claiming that his studies had demonstrated conversion of heat into work, but that he was planning further experiments. Thompson replied on the 27th, revealing that he was planning his own experiments, and hoping for a reconciliation of their two views. 
Although Thompson conducted no new experiments, over the next two years he became increasingly dissatisfied with Carnot's theory, and convinced of Charles. And his 1851 paper, Thompson was willing to go no further than a compromise, and declared the whole theory of the motive power of heat is founded on, two, propositions, due respectively to Chow, and to Carnot and Clausius. As soon as Chow read the paper he wrote to Thompson with his comments and questions. Thus began a fruitful, though largely epistolary, collaboration between the two men, Chow conducting experiments, Thompson analyzing the results, and suggesting further experiments. The collaboration lasted from 1852 to 1856, its discoveries including the Chow Thompson effect, and the published results did much to bring about general acceptance of Chow's work and the kinetic theory. Kinetic theory. James Prescott Chow. Kinetics is the science of motion. Chow was a pupil of Dalton, and it is no surprise that he had learned a firm belief in the atomic theory, even though there were many scientists of his time who were still skeptical. He had also been one of the few people receptive to the neglected work of John Herapath on the kinetic theory of gases. He was further profoundly influenced by Peter Ruet's 1813 paper on the measure of moving force. Chow perceived the relationship between his discoveries and the kinetic theory of heat. His laboratory notebooks reveal that he believed heat to be a form of rotational, rather than translational motion. Chow could not resist finding antecedents of his views in Francis Bacon, Sir Isaac Newton, John Locke, Benjamin Thompson, Count Rumford, and Sir Humphrey Davy. Though such views are justified, Chow went on to estimate a value for the mechanical equivalent of heat of 1034 foot-pound from Rumford's publications. Some modern writers have criticized this approach on the grounds that Rumford's experiments in no way represented systematic quantitative measurements. In one of his personal notes, Chow contends that Mayer's measurement was no more accurate than Rumford's, perhaps in the hope that Mayer had not anticipated his own work. Chow is attributed with explaining the green flash phenomenon in a letter to the Manchester Literary and Philosophical Society in 1869. Honours Chow died at home in Sale, and is buried in Brooklyn's cemetery there. The Great Stone is inscribed with the number 772.55, his climacteric 1878 measurement of the mechanical equivalent of heat, in which he found that this amount of foot-pounds of work must be expended at sea level, to raise the temperature of one pound of water from 60 to 61 f there is. Also a quotation from the Gospel of John, I must work the works of him that sent me, while it is day, the night cometh, when no man can work, 9, colon 4. The Wetherspoons public house in Sale, the town of his death, is named after him the J.P. Jowl. The family brewery still lives on, but now located in Market Drayton, see jowlisbrewery.co.uk for more information on origins. Co.uk for more information on origins. Co